it's Robin Riley for Dalbello's Designs. Welcome to my video tutorial that I am calling the Sweet Poppy Bobble Card. Today I'm going to show you how I created this beautiful, actually very easy to do card using some Sweet Poppy uh, supplies. But before we get started, like always, I would like to invite you to join us in our Facebook groups. We have two of them. We have the Del Bellos Design Lounge, and that's where we showcase all of the Lavinia products. We also have the Del Bellos Design a la carte page, and that's where we showcase everything else, such as Sweet Poppies, Nellie's, Cardio, whatever Patty has in the shop. The other social media platforms that we are part of our Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok. And if you want to join us over there to have more inspiration, all you have to do is go to those sites and you search the hashtag Del Bellos Designs and you will find our creations there. Okay, that being said, let's take a look at this card and the supplies that I use to create it. Let me just set that here to the side. So what I'm going to be starting with is a card topper that measures four and a quarter inch by five and three quarter inch. And this is just a heavyweight, smooth white card. The base of the card is going to measure six inches by nine inches, and it is scored at the four and a half inch mark. The steam, um, let, let's start with the stencil first. Okay, many of you are aware that Sweet Poppy makes some absolutely gorgeous stencils, and their stencils are made of a stainless steel. They're metal. They're very nice. They're very durable. They're very easy to work with. So the one that I'm using here is SPS 125B, and this is their newest bobble stencil that's available. If you are going to use these types of stencils, the metal ones, I suggest that you have a magnetic surface to work on. And this simply helps hold that in place. And it's well worth the investment to have some type of a magnetic plate to work on. I will also be using my Misty tool for the stamping. As far as the stamping goes, I am using the Sweet Poppy Robin and Holly A6 stamp set, in which you get this beautiful Robin on a branch, along with the sentiment, Merry Christmas and Peace on Earth. Today, we'll just be using the Merry Christmas to keep it simple. I used Distress Oxide inks for the blending of the bauble itself. Let me move this out of the way here. And the inks that I used was a combination of Lost Shadow along with Hickory Smoke. I applied the ink with a blending brush. You use the tool of choice that you like for applying ink. The other inks that I used, I will be stamping the Robin in Versafine Claire Morning Mist, the Sentiment is stamped in Nocturne. Some of the other objects that will be needed. I have a variety of distressed watercolor crayons here. And that is what I used to paint the colors onto the bird, the holly, and the berries. I'll show you how simple this is. Let me set those off. And what I like to use is a water brush. The brush, the base is filled with, hopefully you can see, a little bit of water. If you don't have one of these, I suggest you get one just because of the convenience of them. Otherwise, a regular paintbrush will do. I used a little bit of a gray colored pencil to add some highlights, low lights, I guess I should call them, and the shadowing in the robin, trying to give the appearance of more dimension. If you can see closely, the edge of my card topper is simply done with a black marker. I will show you how I achieve that. Some other supplies that you're going to need will be some low-tack tape, and I prefer the Sweet Poppy brand low-tack tape. 
along with some type of adhesive. This is my preference, the Art Glitter Designers Dry Clear Adhesive. I will need, naturally, a little bit of water and a microfiber cloth to clean off my stamps. Okay, if there's any other supply that I missed, it will be definitely listed in the, in the description below. So let's get started. The first step will be to create the bobble onto the card topper. And to do so, I'm gonna rotate this in the correct direction. I wanna try to get my stencil centered well. Now, again, if you know Sweet Poppy, you, Sweet Poppy makes things large. So I always try to find a way that I can adapt them to, to the size that I prefer. So as you can see, hopefully you can see, there is a hanger for this. I'm not going to be able to use that because of the size of the card topper that I chose. So what I'll do is I just kind of visually align so that I have the same a uh, little bit of card sticking out. It's okay that I'm not gonna have the complete topper. I'm literally not concerned about that. Same thing with the point at the bottom. I'm not concerned that I'm not gonna have the entirety of this stencil. So I just kind of check it to make sure it's rather even for me and carefully place it onto the magnetic surface that I'm working on. Now there is a very fine line of white card sticking out the edge. I'm going to cover that with the tape because I don't want my brush, my blending brush to hit that edge and create a line. So I will cover that. Well, there it goes. Now I'm going to start out with my blending brush without adding any ink. As I said, the combination of colors that are on this brush are the Lost Shadow and the Hickory Smoke. I don't want this bobble to be bright. As you can see, it's kind of faded on one side, a little darker on another. I just want to give a nice appearance of the bobble in the background. So I'm going to start out just with the ink that is currently on my brush in a circular motion. I'm going to apply the first layer of ink. It's going to probably be kind of hard for you to see initially the ink being applied. But it is, again, a very, very light coat, continuing in a circular motion, even going into the center lightly. Now I'm gonna concentrate a little more ink on the left side, simply being that I want to create a little more dimension, kind of giving this that round appearance. And when working with Distress Oxide inks, always remember that the longer it sits on the paper, the more that ink is going to absorb, it's going to dry, and then you'll see the true color later on. So some of these blotchy parts will actually blend out a little bit more, and you won't notice them. Plus, we're going to stamp on top of this. Okay, that's it. That's all there is for the bobble. So I'll remove the tape, and I'm going to remove the stencil, and there you have what I was hoping to achieve. Now, as far as cleaning the stencils, all I do is I take a microfiber cloth with a little bit of water, and I very gently wipe off the ink. I like to leave it attached to the magnetic piece because it holds it still for me. Now this one is not difficult to clean at all, but some of the Sweet Poppy stencils have some sharp points that number one can cut you, and number two, you can bend them easily. So my advice is to always keep it adhered to that magnetic surface for cleaning. Okay, I'll let that dry off naturally, wipe off my magnetic sheet so the next time I use it, it'll be in good shape. Okay, so let me bring in that Misty and I'm gonna do the stamping of that Robin. Okay, let me get this 
think I will just work down here in the bottom corner to make it easier on me. Let me rearrange a little bit on my desk to give myself some room. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna use the magnets to hold this in place. And I wanna bring in my stamp, this gorgeous Robin. And I'm going to place it onto that bobble in the direction that I would like it to appear. Now, if you look carefully, you'll see some of the holly leaves are falling off of the bobble. That would look pretty good, actually. You could let that happen. That's fine. But today I want to show you how to eliminate those pieces and how easy it is to do. All I'm trying to do is to center that Robin's body basically in the bobble. I'm going to pick it up first. Let me get this. There we go. Now, there, as I said, there's going to be some holly that's hanging off. What I'm going to do is use that sweet poppy tape. I'm just going to peel it off in small pieces, and I'm going to block the edge of where that holly is going to fall from the bauble. So what I'm going to do is try my best to get that lined up really close to the edge. And let's see how I did here. Okay, I'm going to add another small piece here. Now, granted, you could use a masking sheet if you're comfortable with using those. There are other products on the market that you could use to block off the edge of these stencils. I actually just prefer using the Sweet Poppy low tack tape. It's very simple to use. Okay, again, matching this up. Okay, I have that area well covered. Now I need to get the point of that leaf and the edge of this leaf masked. So again, just really small pieces of tape. And you can actually bend this a little bit and get almost a curve just by manipulating that tape a little bit. Just remember to keep it on that edge. And let's double check that leaf up. I still need a wee little piece down here in a corner. So bear with me as I'm working on this. Okay, I think right now I have that side of the stamp well masked. Now I want to get right here, this little piece covered. Again, working with smaller pieces of tape makes it a whole lot easier to mask. Let's see if I, yeah, that was good. Perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to stamp with here is the VersaFine Clear Morning Mist. This is a drier pad of mine. I don't want a bold stamped image on this. I want this to be lighter. So applying the ink, just simply by tapping up and down over the entire stamp. And then I'll go ahead and press it into my card. I'm not going to press too, too hard. Again, I want a lighter image. Now, if your ink pad is super juicy, I would suggest that you stamp off first onto another card and then stamp your bobble. I'm going to re-stamp because this area where the holly is, is a tad bit too light for my liking. So I want to go, I would rather do several attempts to get to the shade that I want than to overdo it initially. Okay, let's see how that one came out. Okay, a little bit better. I can give a little more pressure on that holly leaf. And this one, here you're seeing the benefits of having a misty. You can stamp numerous times and not worry about the paper shifting. Let me get this stamp cleaned off. And for cleaning stamps, I always just use a microfiber towel and water. Nothing special is needed for those. Remember periodically also to wipe off the backs of your stamps. They collect little bits of dust and dirt and whatnot that's in the air. So this helps continue them to be sticky. And if by chance you've really lost a stick on your stamps, 
wash it in some dish liquid, let it air dry naturally, and it'll be super sticky again for you. Okay, I'm going to remove the tape here and hopefully not see anything underneath, which I got a nice clean edge there. I'm fine with that. Same thing on this side, nice clean edge, perfect. Now, what I would want to do before I go on to coloring is I want to add my sentiment. So I'm going to grab that Merry Christmas sentiment. And I am going to, well, first get this aligned better. Because I want to use my grid paper that's behind to help me line this up. That looks pretty good, actually. Get everything held down and I'm just going to use the Nocturne to add that sentiment. When stamping sentiments, gently pat your ink on. You don't want to push because you don't want to make one letter fatter than the other. And then when you press onto your card, lightly press because if you press too hard, you can get that ink to kind of blob and you don't want that so there's a nice clean crisp image just like I wanted it again always get in the habit of cleaning your stamps immediately then you won't have any mishaps okay we're done with the misty now what we're going to do next is I'm going to show you how I added color to that robin so like I said I like using the water pen brush because it's filled with water. I just have to dot some out here if I would like. If not, I can just let it be on the brush. Make sure you have a paper towel nearby so that you can dot off excess ink if that be the case or whatever medium it is that you're working with. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the red breast of the robin. And I'm going to be using two of the watercolor pencils, Rusty Hinge and Barn Door. I'm going to start with the Barn Door, and this is how I like to do it. I like to get a little dab of water there that's on my work surface, and I'm going to add it to the tip of the watercolor pencil. And as you can see, I hope there's some, let's put it this way, there's some color on that tip. I do like to take a little bit off initially because I don't know how strong this is going to be. And I want this to stay rather light. I'm going to just apply a light coat of the color over the breast of the robin. And as you can see, it's, this naturally fades out the further away you get from the initial coloring that you put down. I'm going to go, go in again, just with a little more color. Take off the excess. I like to work in layers. I don't want it to be too, too bright. And this way I feel as if I have more control over the color. I would, it's so much easier to build color in layers than to attempt to take it away. It's virtually impossible to get it that direction. Okay, now that I have that on there, I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of that rusty hinge. And I do want these colors to blend. So let me grab a little bit. And I'm going to just go right over top of that initial color. And it just automatically blends so nicely and I can just continue to draw the color into the areas where I want it to be. All right so you can play with this as long as you want to play with it to achieve the colors that you are looking for. So as you can see I'm kind of blending those two colors together on my work surface. Just want it to be a tad bit more with that orange shade to it. Okay, I'm gonna be satisfied with that. I'm going to stop. Now to clean this brush, I simply squeeze some water out onto my paper towel. 
and brush it off until I see no color whatsoever. So as you can see, it's pretty clear. Okay, now the next two colors that I'm going to be working with, this is going to be for the rest of the bird. I'm going to be using frayed burlap and vintage photo. Now frayed burlap appears here to be green. It's not. It's more of a golden brown color. So let me just get a dab of water out there for me in case I need it. Again, just adding the water to the tip of the brush. Put some down to see what it looks like. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint this first layer onto the feathers of the bird. As you can see, it's rather a light shade, which is what I was going for. Let me get some more water out here. There we go. Tap off some of the excess there. Now what's nice about the Sweet Poppy stamps is you can see the shaded area has been built into the stamp. It's just a series of dots that create that shaded area. That's where I'm going to focus the majority of the color is in that area. So let me get this spread out. As you can see, I got a lot of color on that, but that's okay because it spreads out with water. It's not hard to move. Even if this watercolor dries, you can add water on the top and continue to move that color around. All right, I'm gonna add again a little more here. The tail is hanging behind that branch. And I get some color around the eye and the beak. So one more little bit of this color I wanna add here more in those shaded areas that I was just talking about. I want another layer there. Here you can see some under the breast. Now, let's switch to the next color, and the next color is the Vintage Photo. This is a lot darker, so I'm going to start off going very light, mainly in those shaded areas is where I'm going to place this. All I'm trying to do is to create some dimension with this watercolor. And like I said, you, you know what? You, you do you, I do me, as far as how many layers of this watercolor you want to apply. We all have our own likes and dislikes. So you continue to work on this as you want as far as adding more layers. I want to get a little more in this area here. Okay. And what's nice about this too, these watercolors, is that with the crayons I'm talking about, is that you don't need a lot of water. So the dry time is rather quick. Okay, you can see how that came out. All right, I'm going to continue on with that same color and I'm going to fill in the branch. Now, I want the branch to be a tad bit darker than the bird itself. Something else to keep in mind when you are using watercolors, if you go outside of the line, so be it. To be honest, I mean, that's kind of what a watercolor looks like. So don't worry if a little bit of the water seeps out further than the area that you're painting. It all works out. Okay, again, there's a shaded area here that I'm going to add just a little more of the vintage photo. And now, as you can see, I got a really dark area there. All I need to do is get a little bit of water and I'm gonna spread that out a little bit so that it's not as dark. That's what's fun about these, I think. I am going to add another little bit of brown here. And then I'm gonna call it finished. Okay, let's move on to the next color. I'm going to do the holly next. Cleaning off my brush, remember all you have to do, a little bit of water on that paper towel, 
rub that brush in there until you're getting clear water coming out. All right, let me add some water to my work surface. And I'm going to be using the color Rustic Wilderness. And I'm going to add my color on, take off some of the excess, and then begin adding the color to each of the holly leaves. First layer is always very, very light for me with very little water. Then I go in and add the next layer, which is darker, and then just spread it out with the water. Okay, you see how easy that is to do? And again, remember, don't worry about if you kind of go out of the line. It's going to make it look more like a watercolor. Okay, let's check out this next one. Now, this is just a partial. This one I'm going to be more careful on because I don't want any of the green to seep out onto that white space. So I'm going to keep that a little closer. Okay, let me add some darker green into those shaded areas. Now granted, you are going to take your time a lot more than I am here to do a neater job. I'm just trying not to bore you. All right, let me pick up a little more of that green, adding it to the large leaf here. And I rem there I am on that edge again, so I want to be careful. I mean, I could tape it off if I wanted, but I want to be real careful not to get any green to seep out into that area. So that's why I'm pulling my color back this direction when I get close to that edge. You can see how simple this water coloring is with these crayons. You don't need much as far as water goes. And it's so easy to apply the different layers. Okay, one more leaf to go. I'm sure you're noticing that I am rotating my card. That's how I like to work. I bring the artwork to me. I don't want to get my hand all twisted in an uncomfortable position. I just want to keep it comfortable for me because then I'm less likely to make a mistake. And I'm going to just let this area fade off. A little more color in this darkened area. Which, ooh, I got a lot there, didn't I? Okay, let me just spread that out a tad bit more. I'm going to add some more here so that they all kind of resemble each other as far as darkness goes. And with this area that I got a little bit more green in, I'm going to just water it down and spread that color. And I can always take my paper towel and dab up extra color. Okay, the last color I have to add is the berries, berry color. So let me get this cleaned off. Make sure I don't have any green left in my, my brush. And the color that I'm going to use for the berries is the fire, fired brick color. Let's get that surface cleaned off. Add some water there just in case I need it. Tap off the excess. And I'm just going to apply a very light coat initially to each of the berries. And then my second coat, I will go in and concentrate on that shaded area. All right, let me pick up a little more red. I'm going to give a little more red in that center area where it's shaded. This just creates some more dimension. And we're going to call it a day with those. Now, where I'm at today, where I live, it's very humid. So... The dry time is a is going to take a little bit longer than what I typically have. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give a real quick blast with the heat gun to dry this up so that I can move on to the next step. But you know what, where you are, you may not need to do this. Again, this is, you know, you're going to have to judge that on your own. Just give a quick dry time. So 
typically what I like to do is let it dry all by itself. But for the sake of our video, I want to get that wettest area dried. So what I'm going to do now is use that colored pencil. This is a Polychromo Warm Gray 5. You can use any color gray that you want. You can even use a regular pencil, just one that you write with. You can get the same results. The trick to using a colored pencil is to layer. You start out lightly, just like I did with the ink. Start out lightly and then build each layer. What I'm going to do is just follow those dotted areas that Sweet Poppy already placed for the shading for me. And I want it to appear to be three-dimensional. So following those lines, a thin coating of gray. This is actually very easy to do. This is one of my favorite things to do, to be honest with you. I love creating the shadows and trying to get better at it each time that I do it. So, like I said, first layer is very, very light. Just going over those dotted areas that were placed there for me. As you can see, I'm not being too careful, but I am just going in a circular motion. That way I, I don't wanna see lines. So that's why I go in the circular motion. I'm even going to go over the talons a bit just to make them stand out. Then my next coat will be just a little heavier in those shaded areas. This is when you start to really see the dimensions start to appear. Along the lines of the wings, I make it a lot darker, being that there would be a shadow under each of those feathers of the wing. See, you can see already how that's starting to develop a more dimensional look. It's not as flat as it was. And you can, con me, I can continue to do this for a very, very long time to get the appropriate shading that I like. Just play with it and you just continue adding layers until you get the dimension that you're hoping to get. I'm kind of rushing here, again, for the sake of your boredom. But I think you can see already that there is a lot of dimension now and shadowing under that wing. And you could continue to develop that by just adding more layers as you go. Just do them lightly. Now, one good thing about working with a pencil is that you can erase. So if you do happen to get too much color in a specific area, all you have to do is bring in that eraser and clean it up. Okay, I'm going to run a real fine line under this branch here. Again, just kind of giving it a bit of a shadow. Not much, though. All right, so there's the bird. I'll continue to do the same thing with the leaves. A light application of the gray. And I like using gray when it comes to shadowing. Some people use black and that's fine. Again, you gotta do what you, what, what you like to do. But I like using the gray. That way I can make it as dark as I want and it almost appears as if it's black in some areas. So very quick highlight of these. Gonna go back in and create a darker, darker area here. Okay, now I did go out of the line there, so I could take an eraser. Let me grab my little eraser here. Again, that's the joy of using pencils, as you can remove your mistakes rather easily. And let me get this last leaf done. And then for the berries, all I did was trace that little rounded area to create the dimension. Again, I'm not like 
being too specific. The eye to me just didn't pop out enough. So what I'd like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just trace that semicircle and then give this eye a darker area in the bottom. Uh, I just erase, or I just kind of covered up that white area. So I'm going to erase that. I could actually go in there with a white pen if I wanted to make it jump out a little bit more, but I'm going to be, I'm happy with that. Okay, the last step to this card is simply creating that faux frame. And to do so, I like to use a black permanent marker. I use these scraps that come from the backings of stamps that we buy. And I leave an edge of the card sticking out, maybe about an eighth of an inch. That seems to work for me. I apply a lot of pressure on the top of the card because I don't want my card to slip. And I simply drag the marker all the way from corner to corner, creating this fine black line. Now, the trick to this, I believe, is keeping the pressure on with the right hand or your opposite hand that you write with. And when you drag that pen, keep your eye on the point of the pen and follow it all the way to the end. You have to stay focused or that pen can slip really easily and then you have to get creative in how you cover that up. So that's what works for me in creating a faux frame. Naturally, you wanna cover all four sides. And this eliminates adding thickness to your card by adding another, say a black piece behind it. If you create the faux frame, then your card is gonna remain a little thinner. All right, let's finish this card off. I'm taking that six by nine piece and creasing, I'm just using my fingernail to get that crease in place. And I will use my favorite Art Glitter Designers Dry Clear glue. I like to put my glue about an eighth of an inch on the inside of the edge of the card. And naturally, this is gonna give me a hard time coming out, there it goes. That way, when I press this onto the card, if I have too much glue in an area, it's not going to ooze out. That's why I try to stay on the inside that eight inch, eight inch or eight. Oh my goodness, say that again. On that one eight, eight inch area. So hovering, placing it in place, giving it a nice press. I didn't get any oozing, which is awesome. And there you have it. Now we'll compare the two. You know, we can never do two of the exact same thing. It just never works out, but it's close. On the original, I definitely took more time when it comes to the shading. So this one looks definitely more dimensional than this one, but I think you get the idea. At any time, I can go back in and add more shadows and more shading to get a result that I like. So I hope you enjoyed this process. I hope you give this a try. This is definitely an easy project to do and one that you get better with in time. So I hope you take the time to try this and share it with us in the appropriate Facebook group, which in this case would be the Del Bellos Design a la carte page since these are sweet, par sweet poppy products. Thanks so much for watching. Truly appreciate that. Love all the comments that you leave me. Thanks. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.